Well, check out these stats. Starting right guard, shot. He's no longer in school. Starting linebacker, shot. No longer in school. Starting center, arrested for shooting someone in the face with a BB gun. These are just some of the challenges Bill Courtney faced after he volunteered to coach a losing football team. Take a look. Not many people would volunteer to coach a losing high school football team, much less one that's in the inner city. But that's exactly what Bill Courtney did. And everybody says, when you get these inner city kids down, they'll lay over and you'll beat them by 40. Not us. In the Oscar-winning documentary, Undefeated, Bill turns a group of at-risk teenagers into a team of champions. Off the field, he helps them rise above their circumstances. In his book, Against the Grain, Bill shares foundational principles he learned about character, faith, and overcoming adversity. And please welcome to the 700 Club, Bill Courtney. Bill, great to see you. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks for having so me. I loved your book, loved your documentary. Thanks. Bill, why did you take on this team with such a terrible track record um, in such a depressed area of Memphis? Uh, the area had nothing to do with it, really. I, I taught school and coached football for a living when I graduated from college and married a beautiful woman and started having children and got into the private world. and. Uh, built a business starting in 2001, and the school was mm -hmm. right across the street from the business, and it was an opportunity to coach again. That was really it. Now, the Manassas Tigers had only had seven, they'd only won seven games in 10 years. That's right. not even one win a year for the whole 10 years. Uh, what was the team's record when you stopped coaching them? Uh, our last two years, we were 18 wins and two losses. Um, when we got there, there were 17 kids on the team. When we left, there were 70. 70. Yeah. That is amazing. Bill, how were you able to turn that team and those kids, how were you able to turn their lives around? Well, I, I don't, they turned their lives around. I, I cannot take credit for the work that those kids did. Um, commitment, character, integrity, the value of hard work, the dignity of hard work, understanding grace, understanding legacy. You know, those are the tenets. I, I, I didn't coach football. I coached kids who played football, mm. and I coached kids on those tenants, the same tenants that are in against the grain. It's the same tenants that we built my business on. It's the same tenants that I built my family on. Yeah. And those are winning tenants, and those are the principles that create the proper foundation for a football team, for business, for life, for politics, for anything, really. And so when people say, how did you do it? Mm. Well, I didn't do it. All I did was share with them these tenets and principles, give them an illustration of what those things look like in a, in a, in a productive life, and then let them use those tenets in their own life to make their own changes for themselves. Well, we always hear that football builds character, but you said something interesting in the documentary, in, in your book, you say that football doesn't build character, it reveals character. What do you mean by that? Well, I, I mean, I mean, you build your character on commitment, integrity, all the things we've talked about. And then when something as meaningless as a game is not going to build something as important as your soul and your character. Right. But what it can do is it can reveal what you've built in terms of the tenets because the challenges in it can reveal whether or not you're going to wilt under the circumstances or rise to the occasion. Just like a toughness in business or maybe difficulty in a marriage or a sick child, mm. those things don't build character, but they certainly reveal your character that you've built based on these fundamentals. Now, Bill, you've also had tremendous success in a, a lumber company that you founded called Classic American Hardwoods, $45 million worth of success, I believe. How have you made your startup successful when so many others have failed? You build your company on character, commitment, and <laughs> I mean it. But when you understand the value of hard work and you understand what your, what your legacy needs to be and, and you build what you are on this foundation and then you go to work hard, What's um, it? When you, you say succeed. character and integrity in foundation, but what is a practical, put that into a practical term for me. How do you, is it the way you treat your employees? Is it, um, how, what do you do that's different? Well, I, I, first of all, I, I, the title of the book is Against the Grain. And pop culture today says you dig in on your ideals and that's all there is to it. And one of the chapters in the book is civility. And it says how we treat those we oppose says more about us than our own opinions do. Wow. And I, 
I, you know, I think you got to get out of your comfort zone. And, and you got to surround yourself with people who don't necessarily look just like you or think just like you. Be civil, be non-threatening, and you'll find so much commonality. And then when you find that commonality, you can grow together from that basis. And when you find that commonality, right. you also understand a person's inhibitions and fears, your employees' inhibitions and fears, what makes them happy, what they want to do. And then you serve them by trying to make that happen for them. And when you serve them by trying to make that happen for them and they recognize that you're working for their betterment, right. then they're going to follow you. And by definition, you are now leading. Bill, how did you get to be the way you are? You, your dad was not in the home. He left when, no. you, when you were about four years old. You were raised by your mom. How did that influence your life? Well, I had a great grandfather and I had a lot of really positive coaches. And, and I'm not exactly like any of them but a little bit of them is yeah. all in me. Right. And, and I think I just got to, I, I guess it was a blessing because I got to choose a little piece of everything that I thought was the best in each person I knew and kind of made it my mantra, I guess. And of course we have to talk about your faith. I mean, how does your faith sustain you? And, and you really didn't become a, a sold out believer till you were till you were married, right? Well, yeah, I, I was raised in the church, but I don't think I, I understood what a personal relationship with God was until I was, um, like you said, married with children. Didn't that change everything? Um, it, it has, especially when it comes to chapter 13 in the book, which mm -hmm. is grace, mm -hmm. because I couldn't be completely happy until I learned to forgive the people who wronged me. Mm -hmm. And I couldn't be completely happy until I could let go of the hurt of the lack of my father. and. It's so much of that stuff that I kept inside of me that made me bitter. I mean, it's pretty obvious. It's hard to be happy when you're bitter. <laughs> yeah. You know, it makes a lot of sense. Well, you can't be fully happy if you're bitter, and you, and you got to get rid of the bitterness by being forgiving. And to forgive, you have to understand God's forgiving of us in grace. And what a great role model because a lot of these kids that you were coaching, they were growing up Very without their dads. Very and bitter. here we is talked you. About, we talked about forgiveness and grace yeah. all the time because it, all of these things go together. And, and why is leaving a legacy, I know that is so important to you and you talk about that in the book, why is leaving a legacy important? Because I don't want the important stuff that I leave behind to be able to be sold in a yard sale. Mm. I want it to be something that makes so much more difference in someone's life than that. And um, how how shallow and empty would we be if the things that we think are our legacy could be bought for five bucks on a Saturday afternoon in somebody's front yard? Yeah. We've got to do something much bigger than that. I know you, you gripped me. The very first <clears throat> chapter is gripping. Well, we've just uh, scratched the surface, Bill, and there's so much more in here. Bill's book is called Against the Grain, and it's available wherever books are sold. Bill Courtney, God bless you. You're an inspiration. Thank you so much. <laughs> Appreciate it.